ancient astronaut researcher claims that the Jews are part alien. A new war breaks out in the Middle East, and Hillary Clinton says that unborn children are people, sort of. This is Skywatch TV for Tuesday, April 5th, 2016. I'm Derek Gilbert. First up, a massive leak of more than 11 million encrypted documents from a Panamanian law firm shows how the world's elites hide their money. A German newspaper released the documents revealing secret offshore holdings of 140 politicians and public officials, along with drug lords and sports figures and so forth. The list includes 12 current and former heads of state, world leaders, including the families and associates of former Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak, former Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, Syria's President Bashar al-Assad, and the father of UK Prime Minister David Cameron. The Prime Minister of Iceland, Sigmundur David Gunnlaugsson, may be the first to suffer a career penalty for this uh, disclosure. He faces a vote of no confidence in the Icelandic parliament after his ownership was disclosed in a company set up on the Caribbean island of Tortola. Looks like a nice place to visit, even if you're just going there to set up a shell company. Uh, this could get interesting. The articles that I've read about this release uh, indicate that there are probably a lot more interesting disclosures yet to come from this stash of documents. Speaking of finances, it looks like the pounding the Islamic State has been taking may finally be taking its toll. U.S. counterterrorism officials say that the months of strikes on their oil facilities and their uh, financial institutions have put ISIS into a bind. Soldiers reportedly on half wages. Some defectors say they haven't been paid in months. Businesses inside the Islamic State's circle of influence in Iraq and Syria said that they're subject to higher taxes and fees to try to make up for the shortfall. A senior official with the Palestinian Authority says that the United States is the number one enemy of the Palestinian people. This in spite of years of claims from American politicians going back to the George W. Bush administration that Israel needs to accept a two-state solution. Fatah Central Committee member Jamal Muhaizen said during an interview on official PA television over the weekend that the American people are under Jewish Zionist occupation accused the U.S. government of trying to partition the Middle East so that Israel will control the region, even blamed the rise of ISIS on uh, America's evil plan to force Arab states to ally themselves with Israel to face that threat. Now, it's sometimes easy for us Americans, you know, we get so wrapped up in our political theater, you know, fixated on the presidential election, March Madness, uh, opening day of baseball season, and we forget that there are parts of the world where people have hated each other for decades, for centuries, even millennia, and that those old grudges flare up into actual shooting wars from time to time. And that's happened again in um, an area, the wider Middle East, let's call it. Um, the Bible lands, when we tend to think about them, uh, typically we focus our attention on Israel, and that's obviously where God's attention is focused, the ultimate final battle of prophecy the future battle of Armageddon will be fought at Jerusalem for Mount Zion. But uh, the lands of the Bible go much farther than that. The early origins of mankind stretch uh, uh, to the far east, as far east as Iran, as far north as uh, modern day Armenia. Um, and it is Armenia where uh, these, uh, new this new fighting is taking place. Armenia and its neighbor to the east, Azerbaijan, uh, heating up a war that um, had kind of been simmering since the early 90s when they signed a ceasefire. It's over a region called Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, it's inside the borders of Azerbaijan, but it is ethnically Armenian. They fought a war over this territory back in the early 90s. They're at it again, even though Nagorno-Karabakh is basically autonomous and occupied by the Armenian military. Uh, Azerbaijan uh, sent its forces in on Saturday, and in the fighting, Azerbaijan reportedly lost a tank, a helicopter gunship, and about a dozen soldiers. The Armenians say they lost 18 soldiers, 35 more were injured. Now, Russia is an ally of Armenia. You may remember recently we reported that the two countries signed a long-term defense cooperation agreement. The reason this is significant is that Armenia is on Turkey's eastern border, and there is no love lost between the Armenians and the Turks. 100 years ago, the Armenian genocide, Turkey exterminated Armenians inside Turkish borders, it's estimated that 1.5 million Armenians died during that uh, event, which Turkey refuses to acknowledge. So if Russia 
decides to get directly involved, considering the recent tension between Russia and Turkey, things could get a lot worse in that region. But we humans have been at each other's throats since the beginning of history. Started with Cain and Abel, and uh, researchers into um, humanity's ancient past found that human sacrifice was prevalent in many ancient cultures. This uh, research published in the uh, Daily Mail out of the UK uh, focused on cultures across Asia, Africa, and the South Pacific. And they found that human sacrifice was evident in 43% of those cultures, far more prevalent in what they called highly stratified cultures, a culture where you had a, a, a nobility or a, a ruling elites uh, uh, ruling, it over, uh, ruling over a, a peasant class. The uh, researchers theorize that ritual killings helped humans transition from egalitarian rural societies into stratified urban societies. And it shows again that uh, secular researchers and reporters don't quite see the whole picture because they're not looking at the spiritual or supernatural component involved in human sacrifice. Yes, the religious rituals that involved human sacrifice probably did play a role in bringing humans together under the rule of an elite class in a more urban uh, society. This is what happened back in the days of uh, Nimrod when he brought everyone together under his kingdom based at Babel or the ancient city of Eridu. Um, but this was not God's original design for humanity. And from a biblical perspective, when we look at the practice of human sacrifice and we understand how in s how significant it was. The reason that God told Noah very specifically that not only would a reckoning be required for anyone who shed human blood, a reckoning would even be required from animals that shed human blood. It's a hint that there's something more to the shedding of human blood than just the threat of violence or death or pain uh, inflicted upon another. I believe this is why researchers and uh, are finding this practice so widespread throughout ancient humanity, the fallen angels who presented themselves as gods to these cultures as they moved away from the one true God, demanded human sacrifice because of whatever power there is in the shedding of human blood. There is something spiritual about the taking of human life, which is why it is such a part of so many pagan and occult rituals. Here in modern America, as we have moved into a post-Christian culture, we've not only systemized the practice of taking of human life, we've almost made it an assembly line procedure and we've enshrined it as a constitutional right, which Hillary Clinton defended again over the weekend in an interview program. This was really bizarre. She was on Meet the Press Sunday morning and she expressed a uh, rather unique and contradictory view of abortion. She was asked about it by moderator Chuck Todd. Now, Hillary Clinton, of course, is radically pro-abortion, but when she was asked about the practice. Clinton said that unborn children are people, but people without constitutional rights. Now, words matter, so this is significant. Clinton, whether she meant to or not, put the focus on the debate over abortion onto the debate over personhood. We've talked about this before, the idea that there can be non-human persons certain animals that show a certain minimum level of cognition, like uh, dolphins or chimpanzees or gorillas and my dachshund. But there can also be non-person humans, people who don't exhibit a certain minimum level of cognition. Children up to the age of two, as suggested by bioethicist Peter Singer, or people who've suffered severe head trauma, or people born with cognitive disabilities. Now, in Clinton's worldview, well, it's, it's self-contradictory. You can't have it both ways. Either the unborn child is a person and thus entitled to protection under the law, or it's just a blob of tissue and thus entitled to no protection whatsoever. The way things are going in our society, however, where a man can be a woman or a man or both or neither, depending on how you feel on any given day, we may soon find ourselves, you and me, in a minority where we view unborn children as persons from the moment of conception, surrounded by a majority of people who subscribe to this concept of personhood, where one must pass some sort of cognitive test in order to qualify for protection under the law. 
definition of being a person. And if you think that I'm making too much of this, then with all due respect, you haven't been paying enough attention. Turning our eyes to the skies, we've been keeping our eyes on um, fascinating research about the possible existence of something called Planet Nine. Doesn't have an official name yet, but there is something that is disturbing the orbits of some of the bodies out in the Kuiper Belt, which is the collection of rocks and comets floating around out there beyond Pluto. A researcher now at the University of Arkansas says that he believes that periodic mass extinctions that show up in the uh, archaeological record may be caused by this Planet Nine. Daniel Whitmire, who's a retired astrophysicist, now works as a math instructor at the University of Arkansas, has been researching this for decades and published findings in the January issue of Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. So that this undiscovered planet may trigger periodic comet showers linked to mass extinctions that show up in the, the fossil record here on Earth. Now he puts the intervals of these uh, comet showers at about 27 million years, which means you have to believe in an old Earth, but there is evidence to support the idea that at regular intervals in Earth's history, something wiped out a majority of the species on planet Earth. Again, Whitmire's been working on this theory for 30 years, says he's excited that this new research into Planet Nine appears to support his theory. Whether he's right or not, the uh, solar system is definitely a dangerous place. We learned last week that Jupiter got whacked by something, an asteroid or a comet, on March 17th. Amateur astronomer John McKeon from Ireland was observing Jupiter that night when he caught this time-lapse video of something smacking into the planet. And one more space story. Japan's new black hole satellite intended to pick up waves or radio signals emitted by black holes disappeared mysteriously and then mysteriously reappeared last week. No explanation. Scientists still don't know what happened. The $273 million satellite suddenly lost contact with Earth and then mysteriously reappeared, issued a couple of short bursts of radio signal in response to the Japanese Space Agency's attempts to contact it. Astronomers were able to find it on their telescopes, and you can see it's in basically a, uh, almost a free fall tumble, rotating about once every 23 and a half seconds. Now there's probably some mechanical fault to blame for all of this, but uh, I can come up with a couple of really interesting and disturbing science fiction scenarios too. And finally, from the yes, some people actually believe this file, Jews are half alien. So says Eric Von Daniken. He's the uh, ancient astronaut researcher, author of books like Chariots of the Gods, Gold of the Gods. He believes that's why Jewish people tend to be smarter than average. Von Daniken also says that Bible prophecies are UFO encounters expressed in biblical language. He says Enoch, Moses, Elijah, Ezekiel all had extraterrestrial encounters. Um, the measurements that Ezekiel gave of the future temple, he was actually measuring a space station. Moses at Mount Sinai, witnessing a rocket launch. Uh, he says that Jews, the fact that Jews are overrepresented among Nobel Prize winners throughout history indicates that there's something different about Jewish DNA from the rest of the general population, and that, of course, was a difference inherited from their alien forefathers. Yes, some people really believe this. <laughs> We're expanding the uh, Skywatch TV channel's offerings on our Roku outlet. And uh, if, you, if you want a look at science from a Christian perspective, that's where you should turn. Into the Multiverse, Josh Peck, the host, with his lovely wife, Christina Peck, uh, taking a look at the very fabric of reality, the very fabric of creation each week. And of course, uh, Sharon and I do our best with Sci Friday. You'll find both of those on the Skywatch TV channel on Roku, along with the weekly program, which this week features... Sheila Zielinski and her book, Green Gospel, The New World Religion, explaining why the green movement is really nothing more than repackaged Gaia worship and an attempt by the globalists to bring us back to Babel. Yes, uh, you'll see that today, multiple times tonight, the Victory Television Network, the Christian Television Network, and uh, WGGN Television in Sandusky, Ohio, WLLA Television in Kalamazoo. Tomorrow on the Cornerstone Network, and then again on Saturday, 
again, on the Victory Television Network and the Christian Television Network for a complete list of dates, times, and stations, channel listings. You'll find that in the top menu bar at skywatchtv.com. If you wanted to make it to the Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference but uh, waited until it was sold out, you can still bring it to your home. The live stream is available. You can sign up for one of two packages. Well, actually, there are three separate packages. You can either watch the main room presentations, the Aspen Room presentations, or sign up for both at a discount. And those uh, presentations will be archived online for six weeks after the conference. So you can go back and watch them at your convenience. For more information, log on to prophecywatchers.com. We do appreciate your support. Just your mouse finger can help us out. With a click, share, like, subscribe to our official YouTube channel, and you'll find my stuff online here, my Facebook page, Twitter feed, and my website. And of course, my email address is always open, and I know you're going to ask, so I'll tell you. You know, this whole thing. Now, I don't have any personal experience um, kissing a beard, but I have read that uh, the uh, male beard hair can be just as tough as copper wire of the same gauge so in order to find out for sure, I conducted an official poll, and uh, one out of one wife surveyed indicated that she truly does prefer a smooth face. And because her opinion really matters, dgilbert at skywatchtv.com is my email address. And thank you for watching as we keep watch. I am Derek Gilbert, and this is Skywatch TV. From the time she was little, Nita dreamed of horses. Every childhood fantasy rode on the back of a heroic white steed, coming to save the day. I don't know how long I've had this love in my heart for horses. It's just always been there. And when we were little girls, my sister and I would play all day long. I was always the white horse and she was always the little pink pig. But everything changed in a heartbeat. On December 9th, 1971, a tragic car accident claimed the life of my dad and my best friend and my little sister. And I wondered after that if there was anything left to believe in. As a child of 13, I felt like I had lost practically everything. And I wondered, is this it? I mean, where do I go from here? I could not have imagined back then how God could use horses, of all things, to restore my faith and vision for the future. Starting April 19th, get your copy of Nita Horn's inspirational new book, No Fences, and learn for the first time her amazing story of loss, survival, determination, and healing how the vision and love God gave her for these beautiful and majestic animals eventually led to the 150-acre Whispering Ponies Ranch, a general retreat facility, as well as a premier training location that specializes in using and gifting therapeutic animals to benefit the herding, other care facilities, schools and ministries across the nation. When God puts something in your heart, it's there for a lifetime. 